Welcome to Pro and Con. Today, my guests are Maria and Fernando Alvear. They're from the House of Alvear, which produces what most people think is sherry, but is actually Montilla. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I want to ask you just for the audience right now, what is the difference between sherry and Montilla? The region that uh, the wines come from, because sherry is supposed to come from Jerez, which is uh, an area in Andalusia, close to us, but a different region. But the main difference, apart from the region, is the grape. They use Palomino and we use Pedro Jimenez. That's uh, the second and the biggest reason, uh, the difference between both wines. Now, they use Palomino yeah. for all of their sherries? And you use Pedro Jimenez for all of your uh, Montillas? We use uh, Pedro Jimenez for all our sherries. And they use normally Palomino, but we are allowed legally to sell Pedro Jimenez in, in bulk to Jerez and they are adding uh, Pedro Jimenez to the cream and, and they produce their own Pedro Jimenez, but, but the Pedro Jimenez is, is, uh, is produced in Montilla as well. Right, so, so they can buy grapes and wine from you no, and put it in their no, wine. Not grapes. No grapes. Only wine. Only, they buy wine from you and put it in theirs and call yeah. it sherry, yeah. but you don't buy from them and no. call it Montilla. So that sounds to me like yours is a little more special. It's a little <laughs> can, more pure. We can say it that way. <laughs> right. Um, how do you deal with the, 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 the question of making a fortified wine which cannot be called sherry because you're outside of the zone? Does that make it more difficult? What are the additional obstacles well, uh, to selling Montilla? In, in, uh, in the, inside the Spain, uh, we normally sell more than they do, okay? Because the, the national market, the local market is easier to, to, to promote the wines. They have, I think, uh, a, a biggest uh, uh, market in, uh, abroad, in, in all, uh, all the world. It's, uh, world and uh, very few bodegas from Montilla are exporting. Uh, nearly less than three we are the biggest with uh, exporting. We are close to smaller, so it's much difficult for us to to, to have uh, uh, shoulder to shoulder with our our uh, the winery from Montilla, and so is that Montilla is, uh, is 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 very difficult to sell as Montilla as Montilla. As Montilla. We prefer to sell the wines as Pedro Jimenez. Right? Yeah. As Pedro Jimenez. I think Pedro Jimenez is getting more and more popular around the world as right. a grape and uh, it's easier for us to sell the wine as a Pedro Jimenez wine. Is, I want to come back to that, Pedro Jimenez, um, but, but I want to ask you, is, is your wine more popular in Spain because of its price or because people know it better? Mm. Well, I think it's, uh, there are the two things are right. Uh, people know enough the Montilla and um, we normally are cheaper because we are not fortified and so we, we don't pay the taxes for fortified wine in Spain. Now you've got me, yeah. uh, you've just cleared something up with me because my question, my next question was going to be how do you, what's the biggest misunderstanding about fortified wines in general and you're telling me that you're not fortified well, at all. Oh no, only in some of the wines like the Fino. The Fino is not fortified. Fino is not fortified, whereas okay. in sherry it's fortified. Yeah. It's yeah, because they use Palomino. So again, we go to the, to the different <laughs> between the grapes we use. So yes. the Palomino um, w with uh, through fermentation, they only get around 11, 11 and a half degrees alcohol, and with the pH we get fifteen. So we don't need to add that alcohol till fifteen that they need to add for the Fino. Right. So in terms of in terms of Fino, you, you're, you're, you're allowing it to go through its entire fermentation. Yeah. And in terms of the very sweet wines, you do a little fortification or you don't need to we, at all? No, no. I, we do a big fortification with sweet wines because we, 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 are, we, cannot, uh, we only do natural fermentation for uh, two degrees. So we have to, to put it on top a lot. Okay, now here but, we... Sorry, um, go ahead. No, the problem, I mean, the difference between the sweet styles is that we dry the grapes, so it's not a we matter of... dry the grapes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So from that, from the raisins, we make the mask. Tell me how so you dry the different. grapes. Is it outside in the yeah. sun on straw yeah. mats? Yeah. Exactly, outside, we put them on the floor. What happens if it rains? 
it's a problem. It never rains. It never rains in Spain. No, no, no. The rain in Spain comes mainly in the plains. It's not down where you are. Yeah, but in Cordoba, in the beginning September, it's very strange that it rains. That is why only PX is produced over there because uh, you need no rains at all. I told you that uh, uh, to, to, to get the, the, the racings, okay? Right. And also, the Pedro Jimenez grape is a very delicate grape with a very thin skin that is, uh, makes that very suitable for the beef, for being uh, a racing because the, the water goes very, very easy through the skin. But on the other hand, if you get rains, even if it's, uh, it's, it's, not, it's, it's still the grapes in the, in the vine, eh, you will get the, the skin broken and a lot of illness. So you are, it's not possible to grow uh, PX uh, vines near the sea, sea coast or in upper regions in Spain. Eh? You need I a, see. a hot and a warmer climate of the center of Andalusia. Yeah. Right, right. And the dry climate. Now, this, this is the general listing available on Terra. It's mm -hmm. called Alvear Amontillado. Mm -hmm. I don't see anywhere the word PX. Um, it's on the back. Right. But you're saying that you, 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 this is where my confusion is because you're telling me you want to promote the wines as PX. Yeah, well, because in this type of wine, you always, we have the finos, we have the amontillados, the oloroso, so normally the wines are called in the style they're made. In our case, and because the other main thing is that Pedro Jimenez stands for the grape mm -hmm. and also for the sweet styles. So the sweet Pedro Jimenez wines are called Pedro Jimenez. Mm -hmm. Right, and the drier the wines. Wine. And the drier are called as their style, like mm -hmm. Fino, Amontillado, right. or all But I think uh, we have to, to have a question of Conrad in, in mind. In future. mind, yeah. yeah. Because this market, I think, needs uh, things put it clear in the label. Right, right, yeah, right. So right. maybe we and need we to put 100% Pedro Jimenez somewhere there, but... Um, yeah. I understand, but, yeah. but it says Alvear Amontillado. Yeah. yeah. And when most people think of Amontillado, they think of Sherry. Yeah. yeah. Right? They don't think of Amontillado at all. I mean, uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's not that they don't think of it. I don't think most people know of Montilla. But you know, Montilla, especially in this case, Montilla means in the style of Montilla. Exactly. And so how come you let the and sherry people use your t your name? They were more clever at one point. But <laughs> <laughs> coming back. So, yeah. so tell me directly about the different styles that we have. We've got... Uh, this is the Alvear Fino, yeah. mm -hmm. okay? We're tasting the Amontillado, which I love to taste. is one of my favorite yeah. styles. I love the nose on that. The nose so is beautiful. Nutty and just, oh, it's beyond nutty. Describe it for me. Well, I think this is a, a, a full-bodied uh, wine. Eh? It's very nutty. Eh? It has uh, also some kind of uh, sweetness in the in the smell. Yeah. Just a touch, a kiss of sweetness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of a caramel. 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 Okay. And uh, also, it's uh, in the nose is wide. It's, uh, you have a lot of. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's even silky in the nose. Right? It's know? it's it's absolutely exciting. Where's the where's the strongest market in the world for Montilla outside of Spain? The U.S. Yes. And after that one, Canada. Canada. And yeah. where's the potential market? The biggest potential market? I think Asia, it's always, right now, it's going to be a potential market for everybody. Um, this type of wine, especially this, I'm on the other, that it's in a medium dry. It's not dry. It, it has that sweetness from the Pedro Jimenez. Um, it's great for, for, for food pairings like uh, Chinese or mm -hmm. Thai food, even Mexico. Mexican, absolutely. What about in Indian so food? Like Indian uh, food goes perfect with it, especially everything that has curry. Like yes. Anything that is spicy and has a lot of flavors will go perfect with Amontillado. So all the type of food that comes from the A uh, Asian market goes perfect with it. So I guess we have there that those are our potential markets right. right now. It is true that the people from those markets are not, still are not that into wine, like they're not like a 
big big wine drinkers but they're starting so they're because starting they're opening hustle. the market so and uh, Jap Jap Japanese um, market uh, the Japanese market uh, and the Japanese food will go perfect with the Fina instead, in fact, instead of the Amandia. So. My, my friend uh, Francois Chartier who's a sommelier in Canada mm -hmm. yeah. and who worked with uh, with Ferran Adria uh, at Albuli in yeah. developing um, uh, he's, he's got a book out called Taste Buds and Molecules and in his book he, he does the sort of chemical analysis of every wine and chemical analysis of every food and, and came up with the conclusion that the best wine for every food is sherry. Sherry, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, know, I know very well the, the sommelier, the holy is his name, and he told me once that they, they were preparing a, a, a menu only with sherry because they think it's the, the best uh, uh, wine for their own um, food their in, own in the bully. Yeah. yeah, I love the nose on this. Oh, I love the nose. Yeah. I could just sit here the whole time. Um, how does a young person discover sherry and grow oh. into yeah, yeah, this. I mean, you know, there, there's, there's sort of potential. <laughs> the, most people think of sherry as an old yeah, ladies' yeah. drink. Yeah, yeah, right? But I'm not at all. all. No. Well, <laughs> no, not at all. Thank heavens. But uh, it's, it's very easy. That's why we need you. We need you because it's very difficult for us to convince the, the new consumers. Huh? The, and we need uh, uh, people who own bars, uh, prescriptor, and so on to try to convince people that this is a, a very nice and suitable wine for a, a lot of mm. food. It's, uh, we, I think we, we, that's clear, we, we, all our, our marketing uh, uh, tools should be to promote the wine to the people who should promote the wine to the consumer. Okay? And so, but you're depending on people like me. How can you go direct? Without people like me, how can you go well, direct and, and catch the unfolds? I think restaurants will be always the best way to do it, restaurants of art, because I think people need to have these wines with food. It's the best way to understand them yep. when you pair it with food or when you have it in cocktails because they're great wines for cocktails as well. As well. I've so, had it with just a little soda and a lemon and it's and brilliant. It's beautiful. Brilliant. Yeah, but yeah, it's beautiful with that. And uh, there's this guy in the US that makes a Fino Martini, which is beautiful as well. So I think you have to get the young people through food, I mean food pairings with this type of wine and with cocktails and kind of start in the, in the premises, like in the restaurants and bar. Because that's the only way they're gonna try them and uh, see how beautiful they are, you know, together. Sure. So. I was reading in, uh, in I think it, well, I can't recall if it was Decanter magazine or one of the websites recently. They said that port had surpassed sherry in 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 consumption all over the world. Um, it are are we have we seen is the golden age of sherry drinking in the past? Is it now or is it still in the future? I think, I think it's still in the future in any case. Well, yeah. <laughs> I have to admit that I, I, we had uh, better better times 20 years ago. It's, uh, from the 20 years ago to, for, to today, things are not uh, are not increasing. But I, it seems that it's getting better, uh, mainly I, in UK and uh, and in the States, which is becoming a trendy a trendy wine another another time. So that could be that could maybe we should get some rappers to uh, to sing about sherry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> One of those. Mm -hmm. But um, but it's true that um, uh, I think the the consumer had changed. So now the people who knows more and enjoy more wine really understand the the value of this type of wine, yeah. either sherry or Pedro Jimenez Montilla wines. So uh, I think that's why it's becoming like very trendy right now because in London they're doing a lot of sherry bars with tapas and that the young people, the, the most trendy thing they can do is go there and have a fino or an amontillado with a tapa and sure. yeah. look like they understand about yeah. wine because this is the, this type of wine, the wine lovers always like this type of wine. They think that you, well, you can't it. not like this. Yeah, you can't exactly. not like this. It's so good. So, so that's I think that's the change that we're having. Even if they, I mean, it's not a quantity, but it is a quality change. You know. Right. 
So I think that future will go that way. Fabulous. When, yeah. Fabulous. That's how we see it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for talking with me today. I really enjoy the wine and I really enjoy your company. Thank, thank you, you so much. You. For, you. It was a pleasure. Yeah. My guests today have been Fernando and Maria Alvear. Come back again for more guests on Pro and Con. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's so superb. Mm -hmm.